Nolan Sanders, proprietor, if I may say, of downtown Pittsburgh's hottest new art gallery. <laughs> yes, that's myself, thank you. It <clears throat> is already famous. Yes, already famous on pen. I almost said almost famous. That's you know what? a film. I get that a lot. Yeah, People do that. Uh, it's close. But already famous is even better. We're already there. So what inspired the name for this uh, Actually, there's two things that inspired it. Uh, number one is I worked at the chocolate shop downstairs for about uh, two years, Sinful Sweets. And uh, I, everybody always knew me. When I walked outside, I could walk either direction in a block and I'd talk to 15 or 16 people and everybody would always say that was with me, you're already famous down here. You, everybody knows who you are. So that's where it initially came from. That's why it's called Already Famous on Penn, but the address is 9th Street. So it throws people off. I like to do that. Because that's where the entrance is. Yes, technically. yes, it's on 9th Street. But and for also, reference, right across from 9 on 9. Yeah, right across from yeah. 9 on 9, across from Pizza Parma. And right above uh, the chocolate Sinful shop. Sweets. Sinful yes, Sweets, which is, which is my excellent. friend Christopher. For Weck is one of my best friends, man, uh, which is kind of crazy that now we have a corner of, of Pittsburgh here. Also came from uh, Andy Warhol, huge influence. Uh, Andy Warhol had become famous before he was even famous. He created his own fame. Uh, so before he was famous, he was already famous. So <laughs> it kind of comes from that too. I'm not comparing myself in any way to Andy Warhol, but there's definitely a lot of influence there from him. So Well, a self-made man, perhaps, yes, in that sense. And you yourself are an artist. Yes, yes, yes I do photography. It's uh, That's kind of where this all started from a friend of mine and uh, and myself would sit around at late at night and come up with these great ideas of things that we could do and my photography I've been told I have a good eye you know and after you hear it for so long you kind of want to do something with it so we uh, we thought hey, let's get a studio just a storefront somewhere here in Pittsburgh and uh, because of my connections that I had made at Sinful Suites, we knew that this place up here was open. And then uh, it kind of just snowballed. And to be honest with you, my photography has taken kind of like a back burner to everything else that's happening here. It's, it's well, pretty Well, managing a gallery, yeah, that is a, a little time consuming it just is. from my backseat, you know, <laughs> yeah. observations, you know, from here and there and doing Burger right. Vaughn and whatnot. Yeah, so. it's, uh, it keeps you busy, that's for sure. There's a lot going on, but I still make time for that photography. It's more of a passion for me than anything, so. And this is an example of one of yours here, yes? Yes, this is. Absolutely. It's, uh, I took the main wall here and did a lot of my photography on the main wall. And then uh, I told everybody else, we'll just fill the rest of the place with the space up with, uh, with all the others. We just wanted to have a studio to expose my photography. And then it's enabled me to be able to expose all these under rock artists, friends of mine that work 60 hours. And then they spend two hours in their basement every night painting uh, that would never have this chance. So for me, it's just it, it's become so much bigger than what it started as. Aside from the great location, in fact, we're looking right out here onto uh, what is Liberty Penn, uh, yes. Penn. Uh, and right across the street onto Nine on Nine. Beautiful view of uh, Penn Avenue. So aside from the great location that you have here, what makes this space in particular unique? I'll tell you what, there's a few things actually that make it unique. Um, to be, whenever I was working at the chocolate shop, we would come up here and check it out. And there was an artist in here uh, uh, some time ago and Albert uh, Bortz, the, the landlord who owns the spot, had showed it to us a couple of times just to show us what it looked like. And to be on top of my best friend's chocolate shop that I worked for two years, is that means so much to me. Because I, I go downstairs or he comes upstairs and we just stand <laughs> here and we're like, look, look what we're doing now. And uh, so that, that attachment is there. And then because it's such a unique spot, I mean, there's, there's no other gallery in Pittsburgh that's set up this way. Um, having the different architecture and things, having these little cubby holes where I can expose different artists and give them their own little spot. Um, I think that makes it pretty unique too, but there's just, there's something about this block that uh, when I first started working at the chocolate shop, I started working a day a week because my best friend wanted me to get out of my depression and wanted me to, to come start talking to people again and, and get out into the world because he knows how I am. I'm a social person and I kind of lost that. So that's, uh, this whole block has an attachment for me. It really does. And uh, are you available for rentals? I mean, can folks have yes, events here? Yes, absolutely. That's, a, that's one thing that I'd really like to dig into with Pittsburgh because I feel like there's not a ton of places like this with the location being right here mm -hmm. on Penn um, that people can come down and really expose their things as well as help me expose my gallery. Um, the rental things, you know, it's, everything's based differently price-wise, uh, time, what I need to do to help them with, uh, how long they'll be in here. I mean, I could do a whole weekend for some people. I can do one night. Uh, we could do a month exhibit for some things, so it's. It, I'm pretty open to doing anything like that. It's anybody that needs help getting exposure for their stuff that's going to help their business out. That, to me, that's uh, 
it, it's what this is all about. It really is. So what's hanging on the walls at your place? At my house? Yeah. Uh, a lot of my photography I have in the house. It's a, it's a cheap way to do art. Well, that's, I guess <laughs> so, so it, it works out well. <laughs> yeah. uh, I do have uh, some Andy Warhol. I like pop art. I'm a big fan of pop art. Uh, I'm a huge photography fan, so I do have a ton of photography in there. Um, iCanvas is a great website. To, like we have a skyline of Pittsburgh that somebody did. It's like an illustration. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, when I was younger, hip hop was a huge influence on in my life, so I'm extremely attracted to street art. Now, do you feel that what you have created here reflects the city of Pittsburgh itself? Absolutely. In any way? Absolutely. Number one, I feel like it, it, it represents Pittsburgh because I am from Pittsburgh originally. I'm from Catanning, which is about uh, a half an hour north up 28. So I grew up in the country, um, was always attracted to Pittsburgh. So when I turned 18, I was, uh, I was diverse and, and open-minded, and I really didn't think anything was here for me in Pittsburgh, so I left. I was gone. I know, right? I was gone for about. <laughs> I was gone for about ten years, and then I, I came back here. And from coming back here, the two years working at the chocolate shop and seeing how the city is growing, and how it's new, and there's different things happening in Pittsburgh. It's not the same old, same old. I think that's what's going to keep it keep it okay here, keep it fresh, and keep me above water. Is because there's. Pittsburgh is changing. It's staying the same. There's a lot of originality here, but Pittsburgh is changing. Not changing, but growing. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not just a change about it. It's the growth of Pittsburgh. And to see it, like I said, the two years ago, there was tumbleweeds. You know, after 6 o'clock, you didn't see anybody <laughs> down here. There, was, there were certain people you saw downtown. Have you actually seen a tumbleweed downtown? Yeah, it was paper and all kinds of other I have too. I just wanted to see if you shared that same experience. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy, right? And then you hear like the high noon. Out there. At so, noon, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> noon's not bad. Midnight, different story. But yeah, it's, I mean, how things have changed, and it is growing. The city, to be back here in Pittsburgh, I've been back for about five years now, and uh, to see the growth within that five years, you know, all these movies coming through, all the different things happening, the new restaurants opening up, uh, it's it, it, it's amazing. It really is, and I feel like. Uh, this is a great time for me to be in here, and what I'm trying to accomplish is exactly what everybody else in Pittsburgh is trying to accomplish. And it's a great thing to have downtown. It, a it great is. place to maybe stop in after a show, before a show, between dinner and a show. For sure. And it really seems like you have the ability to you know, morph with the times or what may be yes. happening downtown. Yes, yeah, seasonals and different things that are changing, different things that are going on. We're gonna to try to adhere to those types of things that are going on. Here. So what do you feel your model for success then will be with uh, the space that you've opened here? You're already famous. Uh, so my mom, my sister, and my father are all self-employed and they all own their own businesses. My dad was an independent broker uh, in real estate, the high, highest education you could get in real estate. Started his own business. Um, we, I worked with him for many years doing single family home appraisals. Uh, my mother owns and operates her own kennel and uh, breeds dogs for over 20 years. Uh, my sister started her own grooming business with the dogs, and she's been in business for 12 years. So where the hell did you come from? It then? took me a long time. It, <laughs> took me, it took me 33 years to get to the point where I finally realized something that I could see myself doing the rest of my life. And I think that was the biggest thing, is if you're going to be self-employed, you have to, you have to, even if I wasn't doing this as a business, I'd still be taking photos. And I would still be within the art community and meeting and buying and doing these things. So you, I think that's the most important thing. I think that's what my model is. I finally found something that I'm super passionate about and I can see my mom, my sister, my dad and what they've done with their life. Best friend Chris owns his own business. It's, uh, it's important to, if you're that passionate about something, to do it every day. Like they say, if you love what you do, you don't work a day. And uh, for the past two months, I haven't worked a day. You know, I've been working 80 hours a week. I've been down here doing all the finish work and it's, uh, I, every time I leave here, when I lock that door, I have a huge smile on my face. So as a fan of hip hop, can you yourself uh, lay down some beats? Is that I'll appropriate it's terminology? Funny you say that because we're actually turning the upstairs little room up there uh -huh. uh, into a DJ booth and also a recording studio. This is a genre that, and this may surprise you, uh, but that is a genre that I am not very well versed in. What? Uh, <laughs> I, well, what is the first thing I need to know about hip hop? About Well, there has to be more than that because, I mean, uh, hey, I, I may have missed my calling if that's... <laughs> I'll tell you what, what, when we have the next competition, I'll let you know. But, but there's, surely there's more. Like, what a technical do I need to know? Is it like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I need to like do things like that. We're gonna have to cut that part out right there. But what beatbox? What was that inappropriate? What I just did? No, it's all right. It's not like you sneezed in your hand. But it's, uh... <laughs>